Hi, and welcome to this introduction to some of the accessibility features in MuseScore, an open source music notation program for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. MuseScore is free to download at musescore.org and it's translated into over 40 different languages. For more help and information, please visit musescore.org forward slash accessibility. I'm Peter Jonas, MuseScore developer and community ambassador. I'll be using MuseScore 3 for this demo, or 3.6.2 to be exact, as that's the latest version currently available. The next version, MuseScore 4, will be released in a few months' time later in 2022. Now I'll launch MuseScore 3. I'm on Windows 10 and I'm running NVDA as the screen reader. MuseScore 3, start center dialog. If you're a blind person and you rely on a screen reader, You'll find that MuseScore 3 works best with NVDA, but scripts are available to get it working with JAWS and Orca as well. Other screen readers, including VoiceOver on macOS, will be supported in MuseScore 4. Once MuseScore 3 is loaded, press Escape to close the Start Center dialog and arrive on an empty score. MuseScore 3, Untitled Window, Split Button, Split Button, Split Button, Untitled Normal Mode, No Selection, No Selection. I can navigate the score by using the Alt key, sometimes called the Option key on macOS, and the Direction key. So I'm going to press Alt and right arrow to select the first element in the score. Vertical frame title title composer composer. The first element is usually a title frame, but in this case the title and composer are just placeholder text. I'm going to keep pressing Alt and right arrow to focus more elements in the score. Treble clef bar one beat one stave one piano. Time signature four slash four time beat one. Rest bar beat one. We're on the arrest now, the first rest in the score, and it said rest bar, meaning that this is a full bars rest, and it starts on beat one. I'll keep going with alt and right arrow. Bar line single bar line bar two beat one. Now on the bar line at the beginning of bar two. Rest bar beat one. And now we're on the rest inside bar 2 itself. It's another full bars rest. I can go back again with alt and the left arrow. Bar line single bar line beat 1. Rest bar bar 1 beat 1. And another way to navigate that's a bit faster is if I release the alt key and just use the arrow keys on their own, uh, this will skip those bar lines. So I'll press the right arrow key now. Rest bar bar 2 beat 1. Rest bar bar 3 beat 1. Rest bar bar 4 beat 1. So when you navigate with the Alt key, it allows you to access more elements than you could if you don't use the Alt key. But of course, accessing more elements means navigation is a bit slower. Now I'll go back to the beginning. I could get there with the left arrow key, but if I press Control and Home on a Mac keyboard, that would be Command, FN, and the left arrow key. I'll press Control and Home now. Treble left bar one beat one. That's taken me all the way back to the beginning of the score. And now I'll use Alt and Right to get to the first rest. Time signature 4 slash 4 time beat 1. Rest bar beat 1. So it's an empty score at the moment, but let's add some notes. To do that, I'll press N to enter note input mode. Step time note input mode. Rest bar beat 1. And in this mode, I can enter notes into the score just by typing letter keys on my keyboard, letters A to G. So if I type C. Note C5 crotchet beat 1. That's given me C5, C in the fifth octave. If I want C4 instead, middle C, I can move the note down the octave by pressing the control key or command on macOS and then press the down arrow key, control and down. Note C4 crotchet beat one. That moved the note down the octave and now I'll type some more notes. D. Note D4 crotchet beat two. E. Note E4 crotchet beat three. F. Note F4 crotchet beat four. And now we have the start of a C major scale. So far we've entered crotchets, or quarter notes, but I can use the number keys to switch to entering notes of a different duration. Five enters crotchets, six enters minims, or half notes, so I'll press six now. And now when I type letter keys, I'll start getting half notes, so I'm going to press G. Note G4 minim, half, beat one. So that gave me a G minim, and now I'll type C. Note C5 minim, half, beat three. Move it down the octave with control and down. Note C4 minimum, half, beat three. So far the notes have all been entered consecutively, but if I use the shift key and press a letter, then that allows me to create chords. 
So I'll press Shift and E. No G4 minimum, half, beat three. And keep holding Shift, press G. No G4 minimum, half, beat three. And C. No C5 minimum, half, beat three. And now we have a C major chord. Let's go back and listen to what we've entered so far. I'm going to press Control and left arrow to go back a bar at a time until I get to the start of the score. Note G4 minimum, half, beat one. Note C4 crotchet bar one, beat one. Now I've reached the beginning of the score, I can begin playback. Firstly, I'm going to press N to leave note input mode. Normal mode, note C4 crotchet beat one. And now I'm going to press the space bar to begin playback. Note C4. The score is still playing, but it's just rests now, so I'll press spacebar to stop playback. Normal mode, note C4 crotchet beat 1. Let's add a dynamic marking. To do that, we'll use the palettes. The palettes are in a panel on the left side of Musical's main window, so you can get there by pressing shift and tab. I press that now, but the screen reader didn't say anything, but if I press the tab key again... Add palettes button then you can tell that we're now in the palettes, and I can navigate the palettes using the tab key. Search button. Options button. Clef's palette. And once you've had Clef's palette, that means we're on a palette. So now I can move up and down the palettes with the direction keys. Key signatures palette. Time signatures palette. Accidentals palette. We'd get to the dynamics palette eventually, but if I just press D... Dynamics palette. It takes me straight there. And now I can expand this palette by using the right arrow key or spacebar. Dynamics palette expanded. And now I can enter the palette using the down arrow key. PPP. So that was triple P, which is a dynamic marking inside the dynamics palette. I'll keep pressing the down arrow key to go through the dynamics palette. PP. That was double P or pianissimo. P. That was piano or single P. So I'll press enter to add that to the score. Muse score 3, untitled star window, split button, split button, split button, untitled dynamic P beat 1, dynamic P beat 1. That added the piano dynamic to the score, and it also returned focus to the score. So I have the, the dynamic selected. I can select the note that it's attached to using Alt and the left arrow key. Note C4 crotchet beat 1, dynamic P. Now I'd like to add a crescendo marking. Crescendos are an example of what we call lines in musical because they have a start point and an end point. They're not just at a single position. So to add one, I need to highlight a range of notes. The first note is already selected. So to select some more, I'll hold the shift key and then press the right arrow. Range selection start bar one, start beat one, end bar one, end beat two. So I've selected the first two notes and I'll keep holding shift and using right arrow to select some more. Range selection start bar one start beat one end bar one end beat three. Range selection start bar one start beat one end bar one end beat four. Now I've selected beats one to four, so that's the entirety of the first bar. And now I'm going to add a crescendo hairpin. To do that, I could go back to the palettes with shift tab, but I happen to know that there's a shortcut that will allow me to enter a crescendo hairpin straight away, and that is the less than sign because it's shaped like a hairpin, like a wedge. On my keyboard, to enter a less than, I need to press shift and comma, so I'll press that now. Edit mode, herpin crescendo start bar one start beat one end bar one end beat four stave one, piano, herpin, herpin crescendo start bar one. Sometimes the screen reader repeats itself, but you can press control to stop that happening. So now we've selected a hairpin in the score, and the screen reader said it's in edit mode, which is a mode that with the aid of a sighted person, would allow you to adjust the physical appearance of the hairpin to make the jaws of the wedge wider or narrower, or to make it longer or shorter. But the good news is that the default appearance is just fine, so we don't need to make any adjustments. So I'm going to press escape to leave edit mode. Normal mode, hairpin crescendo start bar one, start beat one, end bar one, end beat four. So the hairpin is still selected, but we're back in normal mode. So now I can use Alt and right arrow to get away from the hairpin and back to a note. Note D4 crotchet bar 1 beat 2. Note E4 crotchet beat 3. Note F4 crotchet beat 4 end of hairpin crescendo. Notice that on this note it told me that this is the end of the hairpin crescendo. The following note will be the first note that is not part of the hairpin. 
Note G4 minim, half, bar 2 beat 1. Now let's add a forte dynamic to this note. To do that, I'll press Shift Tab to go back to the palettes. P. Notice it said P, so it's remembered my position in the palettes on the piano, so I just need to press down a few times to find the forte. MP. MF. F. There's the forte, so now I'll press Enter to add it to the score. New score 3, untitled star window, split button, split button, split button, untitled dynamic F beat 1, dynamic F beat 1. So we successfully added the forte dynamic. Let's go back to the note above with Alt and the left arrow key. Note G4 minim, half, beat 1 dynamic F. And let's add a trill to this note. To add the trill, again, we could go into the palettes with Shift Tab. But another way to get to palettes is to press the shortcut key F9. You have to push it twice. The first press of F9 closes the palettes, but the second press opens them again. Palette search, edit search blank. And puts the focus in a search box, so now I can search for trill. T. 13 palettes match. R. 4 palettes match. I. 1 palette matches. There's only one matching palette now, so there's no point in typing any more letters. Now I'll press the down arrow key to navigate through the palettes. Articulations palette contains one matching element. Trill. And now I'll press enter to add it to the score. New score 3, untitled star window, split button, split button, split button, untitled articulation drill beat 1, articulation drill beat 1. So we successfully added the trill, but sometimes you'll find that a particular element you need isn't available in the palettes, and it doesn't show up in the palette search results. If that's the case, then you can usually find it in the master palettes, which you can bring up with the shortcut Shift and F9. Master palette, split button, tree view, clefs. The master palette is just a dialog that you can navigate with the arrow keys and tab, and then when you find the element you need, press enter to add it to the score. I'm going to press escape now to close the master palette. Muse score 3, untitled star window. One of the improvements we've made in Muse score 4 is to make sure that all elements show up in the palette search results, including ones that are normally hidden away inside the master palette. So we have the trill now. Let's listen to how this has changed playback. First I'll select a note with Alt and left arrow. Note G4 minim, half, beat 1 articulation drill dynamic F. And now I'll go back a bar with Control and left arrow. Note C4 crotchet bar 1 beat 1 dynamic P start of herping crescendo. And use spacebar to begin playback. Normal mode, note C4 crotchet beat 1 dynamic P start of herping crescendo. So we heard that the trill there was affecting the playback. If you're not happy with the sound of the trill for whatever reason, it is actually possible to disable playback for it. And the way to do this is firstly to select the trill. Uh, it's in bar 2, so I'll use control and right arrow to get there. Note G4 minim, half, bar 2 beat 1 articulation drill dynamic F. And then alt and right arrow to select the element as usual. Articulation drill beat 1. Now with the trill selected, I need to bring up the inspector. Now this is a panel that allows you to edit the properties of an element. In MuseScore 4, the Inspector panel has actually been renamed to the Properties panel. But anyway, to bring up this panel, uh, you can use the shortcut F8. That may have opened the Inspector, or it may have closed the Inspector had the Inspector already been open. So we'll find out now when we press the Tab key to try to get to the Inspector. Inspector window. Visible checkbox checked. So we heard inspector window, so we're in the inspector. If you heard something else, then you would need to press escape to go back to the score, press F8 to show the inspector, and then tab, and now you should be in the inspector. We also heard it say visible checkbox checked. So if I press space to uncheck the checkbox. Not checked. Now this is actually hidden the trill in the score, so it no longer would appear in the printed sheet music. But the sound of the trill is still affecting playback, so that's kind of the, the opposite to what we were intending, so I'm going to make it visible again. Checked. And now I'm just going to tab through the inspector dialog until I hear play checkbox. Automatic, minimum distance, stacking order spin, color button. Horizontal offset spin, snap to grid checkbox, vertical offsets, snap to grid checkbox, direction down combo box auto, anchor down combo box above stave. Play checkbox checked. 
I've reached the play checkbox, so now I will uncheck this checkbox. Not checked. So now during playback the trill won't be played. And now I'm going to press F8 to close the inspector. Split button. Split button. Untitled articulation drill beat 1 articulation drill beat 1. Now it's worth pointing out that the contents of the inspector will actually change depending on which element you have selected in the score. Anyway, let's go back and select a note as usual with Alt and left arrow. Note G4 minimum, half, beat 1 articulation drill dynamic F. Now I'm going to go forwards by pressing the right arrow key on its own. Note C5 minimum, half, beat 3. Now we heard it said C5 minim, so I've selected a C note, but we actually heard the playback of an entire chord, because there's a chord at this point in the score, and I can select individual notes in the chord using Alt and the up and down arrow keys. So I'm going to press Alt and down. Note G4 minim, half, beat 3. Note E4 minim, half, beat 3. Note C4 minim, half, beat 3. So that's useful if you want to select an individual note, perhaps to add some fingering to that note. And I've reached the bottom of the chord now, so if I press Alt and down arrow again, if there was another staff in this score, or another musical voice, uh, that would take me into the other staff, or the other voice. But this score that we have at the moment is actually quite simple. There's just one staff for one instrument. It's the piano right hand. There's no other staves. If we wanted to add more instruments or staves, we could do that using the instruments dialog. And the shortcut for that is just I. Instruments dialog ordering. Search edit blank. Now the layout of this dialog is a little bit complicated, so I won't demonstrate its use now, but it should be familiar enough to people who've used other music notation programs. Uh, basically the idea here is we have a large instruments list on the left with all the possible instruments in MuseScore, and we also have a much smaller parts list on the right that has only the instruments that are currently part of your score and at the moment we only have a piano there. So the goal is to find the instruments on that you want on the left and then add them to the parts list on the right. And once they're in the parts list, there's options to sort the instruments in your score into different orderings like orchestral order or into uh, brass band order, string ensemble and so on. And there's also the option to add additional staves, so you could add another staff, the piano, for example. At the moment it only has one staff, a right hand, but we could add a second staff for the left hand. Uh, so that's all possible in the instruments dialog, but for now I'm just going to press escape to close this dialog and go back to the score. New score 3, untitled star window. An easier way to get more instruments in the score is actually to set the score up that way to begin with. So I'll demonstrate that now. To do that we use the new score dialog which you can get to with file new or the shortcut control n. New score wizard dialog create new score enter score information. Title edit enter score title blank. So here there are text fields where you can enter a title. I'll just call mine accessibility demo and we also have subtitle edit enter score subtitle blank. Composer edit enter the composer's name blank and so on for lyricist and copyright. So you can add that information and then go to the next page of the dialog, Alt N. Template search edit filter template scores by name or category blank. And now we have a template search where you can choose a template um, or you can tab across to the list of templates, so I'll do that. Template list, template list, tree view, choose a template to use as a starting point for your score. Choose instruments row two. So the default template is called Choose Instruments, so that just means we would pick the instruments using the Instruments dialog that I just showed. But there's other templates available, I can go down through the list. Treble clef row 3. So this would just be a score with a treble clef like we started with. Bass clef row 4. Great stave row 5. So this would be um, the piano with two hands, a great stave. Choral category row 6. Right, so we've reached a category now, so I can expand the category with the right arrow key and then move down through the category. Sat row 7. So the screen reader said sabbed. What it actually meant was SATB, so this is a standard choral score, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. Sat plus organ row 8. Sat plus piano row 9. And so on, there's various more options available. And when you've found one that you want, then again we'll move to the next page, Alt N, and the next page allows you to pick a key signature, that's simple enough, just use Tab 
and arrow keys to navigate. And next page. Enter time signature. Grouping enter a numerical time signature or choose one of the time signature symbols. Custom numerical time signature radio button checked enter a numerical time signature such as 4 slash 4 or 6 slash 8. And on the final page we get to choose a time signature. We can also add anacrusis which is a pickup measure and we can pick how many bars there are in the score and we can add a tempo marking. These are all standard radio buttons, drop downs and so on that I'm sure you're very familiar with. And when you're done, you just tab over to the Finish button or press Alt plus F to confirm and set up that new score with all the information you requested. New score 3. Accessibility demo window. Split button. Split button. Split button. Accessibility demo rest bar beat 1 rest bar beat 1. So we're in the top staff here and now I can move down to the next staff with Alt and down arrow. Rest bar beat 1 stave 2. Alto. So this is the alto stave, and use alt and down again. Rest bar beat 1 stave 3, tenor. Rest bar beat 1 stave 4, bass. Rest bar beat 1 stave 5, piano. Rest bar beat 1 stave 6, piano. So in this score, we have all those extra staves that we requested, and we can navigate them using alt and the up and down arrow keys. So that's how you can create and edit sheet music in MuseScore 3. I hope you found it useful. When you're ready, the file menu has options to save or print the score, and there's also a save online option to publish the score on musescore.com and share it with our community. Or there's the export option to save the score in a variety of other formats like PDF, MP3, MIDI, or Music XML for use with other software, including third-party tools for conversion to Music Braille. That's in MuseScore 3. MuseScore 4 will also have the option to export directly to Music Braille's BRF format from within MuseScore itself, but our Braille export will be quite limited, so you'll probably prefer to use an external program to do the conversion. We've been working with the DAISY Consortium and Salmai Center for the Blind to improve Music XML export for MuseScore 4 so that it works well with Salmai Braille software. So you have that as well as many more accessibility features to look forward to in MuseScore 4 when it arrives later in 2022. Head over to musescore.org for the latest updates, and don't forget to visit musescore.org forward slash accessibility for more support if you need it. Thanks for watching.